about you, Lord. We praise you because you've um, done great things for us. And we're glad that things are as well as they are. Things don't have to be this well. They don't have to go this good. They don't have to. Um, they don't have to work in our favor to this degree. And it's because of your grace and your mercy. And we just come and acknowledge you first in all our ways. And I pray, O oh God, that you will lead us into all truth. Anything that is not like you, any philosophies, any um, opinions, oh God, that do not line up or align with your word, that will fall to the ground, and only let your word, let it prevail. You said your word, that heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will not pass away. So we stand on your word tonight, and let truth prevail, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, how's it going, guys? Everybody's good? Everybody's good. Okay. I've got several things. Um, to talk about, I don't know, it, it might make, make you a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes it, it makes people uncomfortable. Oh, um, this camera? Yes. Absolutely. So, let's get you already on it now. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be like, no. Um, let's get it. Sometimes it, 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 it makes people a little bit uncomfortable. I have really been, I've really been studying. Um, all I've really been calling on the Lord, and that's what we've been talking about for the last few weeks that we've been together. It's calling on the Lord, and I mean calling on Him, not just calling His name, but calling out to Him, um, expressing our desire for Him, um, needing Him, wanting Him, and calling on Him to give us direction about our future because that's where we are. What do we have? What do we do next? What happens next? Um, particularly after Sunday, like Sunday, it was absolutely bananas in here on, on Sunday. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, um, both services made me smile. Was. I was excited. I was very excited. Um, it was just like it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so with that was that was a blessing, and um, it was complete total freedom, and it was it was crazy. And just thinking about how if we move out of the way, that God actually will, He will command control of what already belongs to him. It's his house um, and it is his good pleasure the scriptures say to give um, good things to his children. We'll look at that scripture again today too. Um, but he just kind of he just kind of opened up the floodgates on Sunday and um, since we're calling on the Lord and because we're at a place in our life, in our lives where um, you can't do without the Lord moving us into truth. I want us to go to John chapter 16. We're going to talk about calling on the Lord in the spirit. Not just calling on the Lord, but literally in the Holy Ghost. So this class and probably the next after it will be connected to calling on the Lord in the Holy Ghost. Um, Holy Ghost, just a little bit. What do you know? Let's, let's do what I already know. Tell me what you know about the Holy Ghost. You said John 16? Yes, ma'am. He's a comforter. Okay. Why in the world would you need comfort? You got the whole world ahead of you. You got all these years. You got all this help. Why in the world would you need comfort? Life is hope. Is it? Yeah. The Holy Ghost. He's a comforter. Huh? Comforter. He is definitely a comforter. Jesus even said in his word, he said, listen, I, it's needful that I go. I have to. I have to leave you because if I do not go, then the Comforter will not come. The Holy Ghost will not come, and He will. Um, actually, I think we might talk a little bit. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's um, one of the scriptures that we can kind of move up to. Go to chapter seven. I mean, verse seven, chapter sixteen, okay. verse seven. And somebody read verses seven and nine. But I tell you the truth, it is good. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Okay. Hey? Uh huh. Okay. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Okay. So he's a comforter. What does it mean to comfort somebody? Let's make it plain. Let's set a little foundation for the next couple of weeks. Hi, baby. Come, come on in. Comforter. What does it mean to comfort somebody? <laughs> you need comfort. What is what? Okay, you need comfort. You say you need comfort because life is hard. To make life you feel better. To make you feel better. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're cute. Okay. 
color. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So you call somebody, make them feel better. What else? So if I if I comfort you, I make you feel better. What would I comfort you about? Tell me some things I will comfort you about, because I want to show you the necessity, the why, why it is needful to have the Holy Ghost if you're calling on the Lord. You need direction, absolutely. We'll talk about that. But you're also going to need in this bumpy road. You're going to need comfort. What are some things I might have to? The, the Holy Ghost might have to comfort you. Life isn't what you expect it to be. Okay. <laughs> Shattered expectations. Wow. Ah. What else? We all keep talking. Shattered expectations. Loss. Okay. Loss. Mm -hmm. Losing something or yeah. someone. Bam. That's big. Or not even that they have died, but the fact that, I mean, when you become, um, when you walk with Christ, sometimes you gotta walk alone. Sometimes you have to be by yourself. So Absolutely. it's not necessarily that, you know. Um, and you know, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking yeah. about death. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking about. Speaking of death, my uh, supervisor's father died today. Okay, we'll lift him up before we leave out here today. Her, yeah. um, lift her. Lift her up. Okay. So loss, not just death, but separation, right? Mm -hmm. Death and separation. What else would you might would, would you need comfort for? Death and separation. Walking alone does not feel good all the time. Sometimes you want to be alone, but the times you don't want to be alone and you have to walk alone, that's a big fat conflict. Because you're looking for somebody to share life with, to share these experiences with, good or bad. You're looking for somebody. And when you do not have that person, that physical person, to talk to, you don't have that person to, you know, just kind of bounce ideas off of, or even just to make you laugh, that could be a very, very, um, give me the word. Give me a word. What could that be? That'd be that's very depressing. Wow. That's it. All right. Okay, so we know that it's important. You're gonna need the comforter in order to kind of do anything else by this. Suffering. Suffer. Suffering like what? Let's go. How do you suffer? Again, somebody looking at you because it looks like you had the whole world ahead of you. You got your youth. You got your health. You got your strength. You got people who love you. Why would you suffer? What would cause you to suffer at this age, at this stage? Because this is the young adult class. Emotional How would you anguish. suffer? Emotional, emotional things? Yes. Um, like what? Y'all got to be specific. These are great things you're talking about. But somebody listening is going to need, they might need something a little bit more than what you talk about. Because you are saying all the right things. Emotional um, anguish. I connect with this one too. Emotional, what else? How do you suffer? How would you suffer? I mean, y'all not in China. You're not. I mean, you're not, not in China, China, but I mean, you do. You are kind of like an outcast. Like if you really living like you're supposed to live, uh -huh. you don't always fit in. Wow. But sometimes you are the opposition um, at work, or you know, sometimes you have to be the odd man out. Exclusion. You might get excluded. Lonely. Huh? Yes. Uh, should I put that one? These two definitely go together. Not always, though, because I can be suffering but not necessarily depressed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I could be going through and I can, the scripture say, count it all joy. I could be going through the joy. But then I could be lonely and depressed. So um, let me put here lonely. And that's what Jesus was talking about right here. He said, listen, if I go away, I'm not, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He said that in, in John chapter 14, I believe. He, talked, he said, listen, I am not going to leave you by yourself. So loneliness is something that is very, anybody in here ever experienced like lonely? You've really been like lonely or you felt like, be honest, just be honest. You felt like you don't have anybody to talk to or the people that you talk to. Well, nobody understands. Nobody understands. That is probably, um, that's, just, that's, that's a very painful thing to go through. So you need the Holy Ghost. That's, all these reasons right here alone warrant you wanting and needing the Holy Ghost. And my challenge tonight, at least for the few moments before, before we have to cut off for Sister Billy's meeting, um, my challenge tonight is because we have so churchified Holy Ghost. We have so boxed it and limited 
the Holy Ghost to one event or one ability. Um, and because people sometimes have sought to have the Holy Ghost, but something just didn't work for you, it, we, tend, we tend to shun or shy away from him or not really want to talk about it. We talk about being saved, we talk about being delivered, but a lot of people really don't want to talk, touch the subject of the Holy Ghost. And he is the most, and I keep saying he because he is a person, he is the most effective, the most effective partner in the helping you get exactly what you need from the Lord. The Holy Ghost. And I, I, was, I was reading, I've been reading about him because the Lord has really been impressing upon me. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't just pray, but at some portion of your prayer time, and I want to put this on you, in some portion of your prayer time when you talk to the Lord, if you have the gift of speaking in tongues, <laughs> wow, there is such a pushing on me already. When you have, if you have the gift of speaking in tongues, you need to use that in part of your prayer time. And we're going to deal with this for the next next two classes. And, and my goal tonight, I told you my challenge. My challenge is people tend to shy away from him because the experiences they, that, that they've had when it comes to talking about how they, the Holy Ghost, they haven't necessarily been ones that tend to be favorable to us. We go through, we tarry, we do all of these things, but it doesn't seem to... Um, it doesn't seem to work for us. Like, it's, look, why, look at her over there. She's going up. I'm over here. I don't know what, what's going on. She all, look at him. He over there going in. And I'm still here. I got nothing. So we said, okay, whatever. I'm doing fine. Sub subconsciously, you say, I'm okay without him. You, do you know anybody like that? You know what I'm talking about? You say, I can still function. I'm, I'm still saved. I'm, I'm all right. You just tend to push. You just tend to repress and say, you know, you feel rejection. And when you feel rejection, you find a way to do a rejection. You see? You feel rejection. You, a lot of people feel rejection because if they come to the altar for the Holy Ghost and they don't fall on the floor or foam in the mouth or if they don't have the experience that they see somebody over here having, then they feel, oh, man, this something is wrong with me. Or some, some um, I don't know, maybe this ain't even real, maybe it's not, you know, they, they, rational, they rational, rationalize it, they uh, put logic on it and say, okay, well, because I don't want to walk away looking like a fool, we just kind of say, okay, well, I'm good, you know, oh yeah, yeah, the Holy Ghost, yes, and we'll even talk about the Holy Ghost, and I know many people, particularly um, a few that I'm thinking about in my head, they have paper. They have titles, they have certifications and validations, and have no Holy Ghost over people's congregation, over our congregation, and don't have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the sum total of everything good that can come from God. He is the sum total of everything good that comes from God. So to function and to go on without Him or to not operate in his ability is really you doing yourself a disservice. You really, really are. And I want you to have a hunger between this class and the next. Some kind of desire in you somewhere deep inside saying, man, I really need the Holy Ghost. If you don't have him, I want him. Or I haven't, because the scripture says there's a feeling and then there, there's one, there's one feeling and then there are many feelings, meaning there are times when you have the Holy Ghost and you just feel dry, like nothing is happening. And just, okay, I'm, uh, you know, I know I have the Holy Ghost and I know, you know, what has to happen, but I'm kind of dry. I'm in a rough spot. I'm in a rut. The scriptures say you can come back and be refreshed. But the first thing is, there's certain things that have to happen. Okay, tell me, tell me some more, because I know uh, it's going by real, it's going by real quick. All right, tell me what else about the Holy Ghost. What else do you know about the Holy Ghost? What else do you know about the Holy Ghost? If you really want everything for the Lord, if you want everything from the Lord now, the one thing you need the most is the Holy Ghost. And I say a thing, but I mean the one person. Yes. Confirmation. Confirmation. The Holy Ghost confirms things. What would you need confirmed? I guess if you feel like, you know, if you're doing something, you feel like you're doing it just because of yourself. Yeah. Or whatever, you may not have... A sh you know, you're not sure of yourself. You know, okay. he lets you know that, you know, it's not just you. Like, you're not, you know, doing this by yourself or, you know, like, it's... 
I guess what you're doing it, you're not just doing it for self. Okay. You are actually, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do, I guess. You just need reassurance. Yeah. Especially when you're at a crossroads. Who should I be with? Where should I go? What should I do? What should I drive? Where should I work? The Holy Ghost confirms things. So when you're calling out to the Lord, he's going to send an answer. And sometimes the first, when you hear the answer, you may not necessarily trust that. Wait a minute, God, is that you? I just need to know if that's you. You can look in the book, uh, Lepus, Judges. You can talk to a man named Gideon in the Bible who, you know, God, he's, the people of God are being ravaged. And Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press. He's hiding from the enemy trying to get food because the enemy's coming and taking the people's food. And the angel of the Lord shows up to Gideon and says, now he's literally cowering and he's hiding. Angel shows up to him and says, what's up, you mighty man of valor? Why are you calling me a mighty man of valor when I'm really in here hiding? So Gideon didn't even see himself. He didn't even picture the purpose that God had for him. But the Holy Ghost, an angel of the Lord, a spiritual being, came to him and said, you're a mighty man of valor. And he wound up defeating great numbers of people with only 300 men. But he needed confirmation. He said, okay, this is what I need you to do. If this is for real what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to put a fleece out. You remember that? I'm going to put a fleece out. I always perceive Gideon as a coward. But all the preachers I've ever heard talk about how Gideon's all that. I'm like, yeah, because in the Gideon, beginning... <laughs> Gideon was hiding and he had like the cheapest thing I've ever seen, man. He was, he was not minute. trying to be, he was like, not trying right. to Make the fleece wet and the ground dry, make the ground dry and the fleece wet. Make the ground wet Confirmation. And the dry. That's what he said. Like, he puts a fleece out. He says, okay, if this is really what you need me to do, if I'm really supposed to be this great guy, this great person for you, I need you to make this object wet, mm -hmm. this fleece wet, and I need you to keep the ground dry. The Bible says when he got up, he was able to squeeze squeeze bowls of butter, bowls of dew mm -hmm. out of this fleece. He said, okay, I need to make sure again. This time I need you to make the fleece dry and the ground wet. And sure enough, he got the confirmation. That's what, when you call, now he's calling on the Lord. I need you to show me my next move. And this is my confirmation. So if you really want to be sure about where you're supposed to work, who you're supposed to marry, because you better have Holy Ghost. <laughs> Mm -hmm. who you're supposed to marry, you're going to need some kind of confirmation in your spirit. Because you can mess around and marry the wrong person if you want to. Your whole life, the quality of your life is just kind of 50% mm -hmm. right after the honeymoon. You see what I'm saying? Right after the good feeling, you discount it by 50% and you have to work back up to 100. You have to go back up to 100. Nothing worse than looking over right after the honeymoon and saying, I, what have I done? I just, that's not even who I love. I got caught up in the hype. Everybody told me I should be with him. Everybody told me I should be with her. I got caught up. <laughs> and you gonna spend money, and you gonna have a reception, and people are going home, and you got a pile of gifts, and no marriage. How do you know you need the Holy Ghost? This point of your life, you really cannot afford to be without him. And I'm saying this, I mean, God is really trying to rescue everybody who comes to this class. He is really trying to preserve and rescue you. If you are going anywhere in limbo, if you're just floating around doing nothing, the Holy Ghost is, he is indispensable for this stage in your life. Because you can save at least a decade, at least a decade of heartbreak, at least one decade of wrong choices and regret just by having Holy Ghost. I don't even know if we have a decade left because Jesus is coming. But you can save the balance of your days, save some of what you're going through just by having him. What else? He, he really is reaching out to y'all because he's taking me through some stuff just to tell y'all this. What else? Confirmation. What else? What else do you know about the Holy Ghost? What else? Give you some think time. Holy Ghost. He brings things back to you, remember it? Okay, you heard that, right? How would you call that? Recall. <laughs> okay. It's called recall. The scripture does say that. He will bring, you don't have to worry about what you have to say in that very, because in that very hour, the Holy Ghost will bring things right back to your memory. He will give you what to say, when to say it. Many of you will have a platform mm -hmm. to be able to be able to speak to people, whether it's on your job or in church. Most church kids get a platform. 
unsaved kids get a platform. But church kids definitely get a platform. Why? Because you have a foundation of word, and he wants to use that word that he put in you to speak to other people or to help other people have a better life. And he's going to give you, at some point, he's going to give you a platform. Just get ready for it. Because you know the truth. And anybody who can know the truth, anybody who can speak the truth and knows the truth, he's going to need that truth out of you because of the, because of the downward spiral this world is making. Everybody in here is supposed to make a difference. You have a specific place and a specific people, a number of people on your account that you're supposed to impact. Your sphere, your circle of people, trust me, you think it's small, it's wider than you are. It has more fingers and more arms than you realize. Your life by itself has fingers and arms into so many people's lives. Your name has already gone places you don't even know, even know it is gone. Square business. That's a very, um, the, the gra I hope the gravity of that hits you. That your name has already, who you are and what you have done, some of it has already gone places you don't even know it's been. I just found out somebody, some, somebody.